super lucky in this. Um, all right. Yes. Hopefully, you guys can see what's going on. You can. Maybe. So you can see what kind oh. of simul uh, and what kind of game each one of these is. Um, I was hoping I got the pawns, but no such luck. Private notes here. Uh, here, I'm going to write a private note. There, I wrote a program. Yeah, I'm playing yeah, with no. all okay. the latest um, Lee Chess on. enhancements. I should pay attention to what kind of variants I'm playing. But I almost certainly won't. And actually, I'll Try probably move the, so I'm I'd prefer to have some open so lines. I can't read the chat for a bit, so, because yes. this is very, very difficult. Oh, shit. I just lost the anti-chess game. God damn it. Can I take a take back? Offer a take back in the anti-chess. I'm sorry. I'm game sorry became, about that. Became more I, I forgot it was anti-chess. Yes. I just already lost. E4 is a losing move in anti-chess. Yeah, we so got I'm, the doggies. We got the Kappa King. Oh, wait, there are no take-backs in anti-chess. Oh, God. I wonder what emotes we could have for so the I've other pieces. I already lost a game because E4 is instantly losing in anti-chess. Oh, I have a 60-second increment. I could play yes. the Grob here, but I won't. Um, uh, Lake Cartier in classical. Yes. Something maybe. Honestly, it'd be more something. fun to watch um, a simul as a whole, because he's going to take forever to get back to my game. Classical. In fact, I can Horde. do tabs on seeing like when he's moving and when he's not. That is Horde. Oh, oh, look at that. He's playing He's playing with the doggies. Uh, atomic. All right. That's hilarious. Uh... Massacre in I wonder yes. if Lee Chess remembers during chess a simul. Um, oh, whoa, look at this. Chess 960 no. star position 666. Oh, man. It's the sign of the Fisher random. Yes. In which case, we will play the Grob. Um, Adosaur it wants to play classical. Again, Black King. Classical. Classical. We need yes. to get a move on. But I guess on the bright side, it's far easier playing the pieces than playing the pawns when you're in a simul. Because you have time to think about where all the pieces are going to go. Yes. And the simul giver oh, no, 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 host no, doesn't no, have time to think no, about three check. Um, pawn oh, structure. Shit. I missed the three check. I was hurrying so, so much, I missed the three check. Now. Oh yes. god, I just... Oh no, no. Oh god. This is not good. This is fantastic. I should just. Play I don't know what you're talking about. Do the this is because so like I can't. Yeah. I can't remember in time. Oh, the three check. Have mercy. Just don't give the check. Like, come on. Like, I didn't notice. Yes. We come to you live with coverage of the Zug simul. Some kind of octopus trolling. As only oh, some kind turn. of octopus can. Alright, he pushed A5. Yes. One thing I've learned is don't open both flanks at the same so, time. Trotovsky with one flank. the immediate challenge. Don't do both flanks, because that just doesn't work. Right. Yes. Maybe I can get a checkmate there. Um. Oh, did I miss Queen it's Takes Pawn Oh my god, did I? Sometimes you can do crazy shit. Um, yes. What happens if I bring my queen out prematurely? Um, all right, what's going on here? Most probably. All right, so what's the best way to open this? Yes. Oh, Love to have an open I that in three check. Oh, a I think six, a6 is a called for. So I want to put my pawns, pawns like here. Um, so I can cover squares oh, like these. Yes. I can't believe I did that in the three My track. ideal pawn structure would be something like this. So we got pawns opposed okay. all the way back. Yes. That's the plan. To what degree that's going to be feasible, I don't know. Yes, yes, okay. But it's not my move. No. Let's go watch the sign up. damn it. Oh, three check. Oh, That's going to hurt. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm just No, you're dead. not dead. Yes. You just have to play C3. There is nothing I can do. No, you just have to play C3. Nothing. It's hopeless. Definitely it's hopeless. play C3. I, I, I have three check. C3 is the book move. 
Very good, Zug. You're not dead. Yes. Get over um, it. <laughs> and Mouse over this. This shifts up the video. Does that look any better or worse? This looks fine. I'll leave it be. Yes, yes. Ah! Uh, I'm going to check the chat to see. Yes. Is there any way I can make this layout even better? Nobody cares. Nobody cares that I, I missed I messed up on the three check and I've already lost the anti-chess game. Yes. If I fold this over... Yeah, that doesn't quite work, so we'll move it back. This looks pretty awful. But it could be worse. Okay. So. Oh, it's my oh, turn again. Six, yes. Hey, look. Well done here. We're going for this, Somehow I guess. this is just a normal position. Oh, um, shit. Okay. Um, so, I suppose D6 is called for, find, right? Uh, he will find for or maybe sure. I do C6. Yes. Maybe C6 is good, after all. Alright. So I mean, sure, my rook's trapped, but eventually it's going to be liberated. This. Um, as soon as he plays... No. Hang on. He's gonna put. He's, he's gonna be tricky. D5. He's gonna be tricky. Okay, so we get the first thing that. we have to think about is how tricky so, my opponent is, yes. and how to avoid his tricks. Or what? Because I think he's gonna be tricky. He's gonna play D. Still debating is C6 yes. any good? Oh, so he'll play Bishop G. He'll play Bishop B4 if I play. Surprise it. Well, okay, so I was saying don't so, open yes. both flanks. Oh, Lee Cartier's playing a, um, this okay. version of the French that's kind of... So oh, we're gonna C6. push C6. Uh, Alright. Yes. Try to barricade here. I'm not afraid. So that's the plan. Coming up next is this. Maybe some... Will be some sensations. Yes. Hang on, I've got to go quiet Komarov here because this is too much. Komarov, you get a break. All right, let's see how Zug's doing. Yeah, so he's learning his three check openings. Trial by fire. And everybody's moving fast. Um, Watch the master develop his pieces. I want to take. Or pushes pawns a lot. What can I take? I want. Did I say and that? When you have a rating like that, um, you can get take, away with pretty much everything. I want to take here. And then I want to make a move that isn't going to be bad. Um, but I don't see what. So screw it. And maybe I go. No, I don't go there. Why would I go there? Um, ah, screw it. I can't move it. My turn yet? I doubt it. Oh, it's anti chess. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, that was anti-chess. Well, how about that? Um, unfortunate. That was unfortunate. Uh, okay, so I could go here. Is this bad or is this good? Or oh, it's theory. It's a lot of theory. Signature. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. That was unfamiliar. Yeah, those were the days, and they had good cartoons. Quality animation. Here's another 960 game. I assume he's gonna castle queenside. Oh, rook sacrifice! Whoa, atomic. That's exciting. Develop for another classical game. Although that's a pretty dangerous position. I guess it's somewhat less dangerous with the knight on f6 than on c6. Um, why can't I just go here? What? 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 Uh, why didn't he take understand. the knight? 
How can you play this way? Yeah, taking the knight kind of would have been winning uh, there, so... I will take. <laughs> and Zog's just going to allow it. I will. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no. Uh, sanity? Uh, do we have a moment of sanity? I don't like yeah, we do. Thing. Why do I have to think okay. so much? I can't figure it out. Okay. Oh, there's some very exciting openings being Um, why am I afraid of any of this? This doesn't look like things I need to be afraid of. It's um, definitely much easier just like um, sitting out here in the audience and saying, you know, there's a thing or two that I know that he might not know. And I yeah. can razz him for it because um, he's a master and he's supposed to know everything. Not everything, but I mean... Ooh, three check. Oh, oh, wow. Wait. Oh, I was thinking the other three check line where the knight's hey, already look, on the three. Won. Yeah, he's just busted One is there. Good, right? I wow. Move nine. Okay. Take. I don't know how he managed to mess, mess it up that bad. I move. Um. Anti chess. Oh shit. Um. Oh, this is anti chess. Wait, why did D5... What's going on? Oh, he's gonna expose my bishop. And it's not gonna be good. It's gonna be a bad thing. It's gonna be Against a one E4, bad isn't thing. there like a concrete reputation that. that starts with a move that's not, not D5? That so I'm going to play... I forget. Here. There's something to it. I don't think it's D5. Hyperio. Before is refuted somehow. I just don't remember how. All right, so C six. Who knows? Um, try, maybe I should take this way and. Nah. Oh yeah, what? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, that's going to be quite different for my game, isn't it? Apparently, Kotov syndrome threw an open the queen side where I'm, I'm trying the, to close it. Um. Variants. Would say I'm actually kind of I do bad. like how he started with a 20 minute um, bonus and oh, after just like three attacked. or four moves he's down to an eight minute lead. Um, go here and defend. Oh no, I guess in some games it's right, like so a this 10 minutes. Move has been played. But um, at this pace he's gonna make it like another 10 moves and then the cycle's gonna uh, end. I seem to be moving my pieces without rhyme or reason. So he's gonna have to pick up the pace a bit. Although I mean honestly I wouldn't be moving them with rhyme. That seems like a stupid thing to do. <laughs> Elo46 um, asks, Will Zog find out that he just lost the three check game? Be something. Uh, Can somebody please tell him? Why do I have my queen on this square? What was the okay, yeah, I guess that's point taken, so that he won't have idea? to worry about the three check game any longer. Oh, Should have yeah, opted for yeah, three check. I think I just made oh. a stupid move. For but no reason. I wanted to try something um, new. <laughs> Let's compound the error. Alright. Um. So. Aha! Oh, it's my turn now. Alright. I see how it As is. As predicted, he plays d6. I shall continue to play h5. With my rook. No, I won't. It's a quite terrible place for it. Um, so, like I said, the plan is to fortify the queen side. Alright. Open the king side. Um, I don't understand what's going on in that game at all. I can't tell you if the plan's um, any good or not, but it's a plan. This is just silliness. I think this is... Oh, so, yeah. I'm a bit silly, quite honestly. I think this is silly. What? Uh, is that in there still? Why can't I take? Oh. Alright. One sec. Uh, it's in there. Oh, I don't understand. I could take, I could take with so many things, and then I'd have. Yeah, we got things. a wasp loose in the apartment. And that's good. That's right? exciting. So why, why is this so happening? So back to um, our chest coverage. You know, somebody else is taking care of the wasp, so I don't have to. He has two bishops. Is that bad? Is it good? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you know. Creatures of the outdoors that occasionally find their ways indoors and then get all territorial and aggressive for being in the wrong place. Yeah. At any rate, it'll be taken care of. To destroy my way of life. Also, somebody could figure out. Well, right. um, I have. A, I know I have a smaller well, audience at the moment, so One thing um, about the after finding I somebody really there that actually knows the answer to this, would be well, I can evict, kind of low. I can evict this I'm trying to figure out how so, to right. clone um, the polyglot engine adapter source code repository. Um, Unbelievable. Basically, there's a program that plays chess openings and compiles chess opening all, books, uh, oh, I and to I want um, to use it and give credit to the author for all the development he did on it. And for whatever reason, I can get the source code, but it's getting his code history and giving him credit for each specific thing he did is just proving to be a bit tricky at the moment, so I haven't really started on the engine comp or opening compilation stuff um so yeah i want to take that program uh augment it to play variant chess openings and then have it work in cooperation with stockfish on the lead chess servers that all starts with me being able to copy the source code and give credit for all the development that was originally done what? Yes get a log of that original development and that's where I'm kind of stuck. Oh, it's my turn again. So we've got E5. What is going on? I'm sure there's a plan there somewhere. Um. Um. Mate? Oh, it's almost mate. It's not quite mate though. Still, that's a positive. Um. So how what? do I best open things? I mean, part of me is tempted to play g6 and see what happens. Just, like, play with fire here. Um, I'm very curious to know what happens after g6, f6. But, I don't know. I actually have some time to figure this out. But, yet, could, I guess. Therefore, Another part of me is just saying, just play f6, because I need some peace development and activity. Oh, right, this is anti-chess. And the longer I, I wait on that, the more trouble um, I might get into. So, I could also take on F5. I not be taking... Although then he plays G Let's takes F5, and then this never opens. Check! I think I conclude that I have to start with Dog takes G4. And then after dog takes g4, pawn takes dog, then I can think about like f6. I think f6 is a better way to open the king side. So we'll see how long it takes him to get back to me. What am I doing? That was dumb. Oh well. Okay. Uh, defend something somewhere, and then do something else to something. Uh, all right. So what do we have here? What was Dan Dan's last move? Dan Dan's last move was just to play there. Okay. Um, I can handle that. Um, I believe the bishops are the future. Let them lead the way. Yeah, it's too bad there are so many participants, and um, there's really so little to comment about uh, new board chess openings. Uh, hey, it's a um, looks like so one of those my general theory about these simuls is so he's got a 60 um, second increment. He's got about 30 players in the simul. So if you do the math. When he gets into time trouble, if there's still 30 people playing, 
He's got two seconds per game. Alright, cool. Alright. Um Alright. Let's continue on assault. Um so, Yeah, I think that's why he doesn't realize what a big problem time pressure is. Nothing. So let's go here. You see here, like he's got three minutes up on his opponent, he's got 10 minutes up on this opponent, at 6 on this one, so earlier he was maybe an average of 10 minutes up per opponent, and now, well he started up 20 minutes per opponent, now he's down to like 10, maybe 8 or 6 minutes per opponent. Um, so at that rate, uh, he's Very gonna get lead. into time Very trouble good. pretty soon. Well played. At least if his opponents keep moving at this pace, which generally players tend to keep moving in a simul. I don't know what the hell to do now. They don't um, stop to think about play. what's the winning move. They just play. Um, no. Playing's fun. How does this work? I want to... Oh, God, I don't know. I guess I have to take, because if I play knight e4, queen e7 is actually really annoying. Because of a million reasons. Uh, and, uh... Look, wow, that d4 and... looks interesting. Oh, actually, I could play f3. But why not just knight b5? Wait, it's not so scary, then. Is there... I just play oh, f3. I guess knight b5, bishop no takes c5. I guess That's the point. Takes... No, the bishop's blocked by the queen. Um... <laughs> yeah, that looks exciting. Maybe knight e4 is best. Yeah. I'd play e6 just for the fun of it, do this? but uh, I mean, he's a master, really so he has to play good, accurate moves. But it's too late to back off now, so... What? A oh, free knight. It's a free, unfree knight. Wait, that's not free. So it's not actually free. His d4 but hangs. Something. Okay, so... But that's still interesting. Uh -oh. D5... A complicated move of great complexity. So let's play here. Um, so is he gonna, where did, oh, this where is did Dan Dan go? What was his last move? Wow, how did he survive? Oh, he, oh, he played Playing there. Atomic and he hasn't lost yet. Oh, he wants to put something there, I see. Oh, you nasty Why person. Why not just, like, F3? does things like that. Um. Er. Oh. Yeah, F3 looks okay. I think it's not so simple, is it? Not sure what else he would consider. Maybe Knight G5, right, but so, I takes, mean, Knight G4 Knight G4 makes him. takes. So... I mean, my, my threat is not particularly yeah, unstoppable, is it? I'm um, sort of called for here. So maybe I have to go here. Yeah. Oh, that's dangerous, though. Uh, he took he takes g4. I wasn't paying attention, but I think f6 is how I start to open this up. What I like what I like about horde is really know how to push pawns. Dangerous. Um, but at least only one side of the board is opening. Um, maybe just here. Alright, um, I don't know what's going on here. I I feel like a nut. Okay, so... Oh, anti-chess. Yeah, I guess king takes d2 is semi-rational, but oh, queen takes d2 is probably safer. Oh, he's gonna and then what am I gonna do? So, I gotta go here, and then... He can't rampage quite as easily, can he? If I although the queen here, yeah, any capture in d2 looks safe because g5. g5 but I take it um, Black choices. has no real follow up after g5. It doesn't really matter what he picks right, so there. My turn here. Um, 
obviously my turn. Whatever um, disturbs but, his opponent the most, I suppose. Uh, um, no, not right now. So. All right, okay, so... Well done. We gotta move faster. We gotta move so much faster and not... Oh snap! Push. Green has quality options. Oh. Um, push. Put it on high. I don't think I have the bandwidth to do both source quality. Well, I don't know. And do my own stream? Maybe I do. Um, Seems clear enough. Whoa! Uh, That's a king. We'll change it to source because um, source really isn't any better. That is, is possibly worse than high king. quality because I mean we're talking that's about Zug's hardware in his particular setup. So who knows? Um, I don't know. I I guess I'm gonna go. All right. So we need to castle. Still so not my turn. This is gonna happen. This is gonna be how we're gonna hopefully castle. Um, it's a little awkward. Because, uh... You know, it would be what? cool no. if Lee Chess would, like, have a way that All right. you could both um, watch the simul and play your game. You know, like for those people well who enough. are doing what I'm doing, <laughs> I guess admittedly is not the main purpose of uh, simuls on Lee Chess. Normally it's the person um, giving hey, the simul who does the stream. That is under attack. I have seen this. Uh, seen well, future. that's weird. Of that rook and the future of that rook is I guess walking into the pin is not so, so bad. I think we're gonna go here and Ideally, White White wants to bring some more pressure on B7, but that's kind of difficult. When but did there's that the unfree knight. Way. Uh, so do I castle queenside, or is that just wrong for reasons that are unclear to me? Is D5 something that's annoying enough that I should? Well, be knight C2 about it? is oh, looming, so. so yeah, unless you play so, so queen D1. Happening. Um, uh, you have to cast. Burp. I just burped. I'm sorry about that. I apologize to anybody who heard me. Burp. All right, castle. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have time to think about such complex decisions. Um. Do I care if he? No, I guess I do. Uh, why not develop a bishop? Okay, well, I guess the rook oh. exerts more central influence. Whoa, somebody is t is threatening something quite annoyingly threatening. Uh, ah, there's no up. threats there. That's a threat. That I, knight I, c2, I not at all threatening. Threats, and that's a, that is a threat. I've seen them before. Yeah, his, he so no longer benefits there, from but, a time okay, advantage. Right. All right, so he takes f6. I think I take back. Um, okay, so where's the mate? Seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> Maybe just a little optimistic. Uh, I still need more squares for my bishop and my knight. Right. Only way to really get those oh, is to take back. Shizzle bot. Um, there's a threat there. So. And. Yeah, it's okay, possible. So, Maybe I'll okay, get so. mated on the king side by the pawns somehow, but I'm kind of skeptical. Okay. Now, the one downside of the way the Lee Chess simul's implemented pushed. is that the longer um, I delay, and the more he falls back on time on all of the games, um, the more time advantage I get from just sitting around. Hmm. Well, yeah. I don't know if that's yeah, no, true. I think it is. Like, if I were to sit right, there so, at the start um, of the simul and wait for, say, 20 minutes. Whoa. Not exactly 20, because I only have 20 minutes at the start of the game. But uh, if I oh, wait for, like, 15, the brilliance of this, then um, move. Um, I Zug will only get back respect. around to my game when it's the game um, where it's of most urgency that he move. And so okay. that's a way, just um, by delaying... I get the same time advantage that all the other players get because he hey, doesn't get to my game what's with the effectively until um, till my clock is kind of even with other players' clocks. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe it doesn't. 
I wonder how uh, priority and urgency and all that's defined. On guard. Actually, right. maybe that's... Uh, can we just start pushing pawns because I want to start yeah. pushing pawns and that will be... Maybe that's better. more the case if the player, the simul host, gives themselves bonus time. They're really shooting quietly. themselves in the foot. I don't want to against, play quietly. Um, opponents who take their time. I'll have to think that one through. I, mean, I don't know what move Black just made, but I don't... It's really weird. I really don't know. I can't tell what his last move... Oh, it was that. Okay. Um... Yeah. Can't I just... Oh, it's my turn again. Take things... And I want to see how he figures this one out. I really want to see. Oh, he just plays e4? He's being indecisive? Okay, that's how he does it. So, with that knowledge in mind... Okay, so, um, why not go here? Yeah, I'd like to Good open job. some lines for my pieces, but it's not entirely clear how to um, do so. Aha, that move has been played. Um, um, I think this is the biggest target at the there. moment, although um, I'm doubly defended. Yeah. Let's see what you um, all right. Um, so if I could vacate oh, some of these sure files, I'd be doing well. That doesn't work. I mean, I definitely have a combination here that doesn't work, but it would be nice to... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I go here. It's a little pushy. Maybe I move my kappa. I, I should consider the idea of de developing my pieces, but apparently that's just... A I mean, no. eventually he's going to be needed to fend off some of these uh, pawns. Because, like, well... Eh. But still, it's my long-range pieces here. that are more but effective and more influential at this time. And do I feel like a fool? I'm not sure. I might feel like a fool. I... Yeah, I kind of feel like a fool. I could start vacating the e-file now, couldn't I? Here. This pawn on f6 is pretty D5, strong. I'm sad that he gets to play that. On the other hand, I get to develop my knight. Uh, I can develop my knight right now. Why not just develop the knight? Still, he's not going to take on e6. Fine. Uh, oh, uh, time, time pressure is a thing that happens yeah, to me. Let's so, move my knight. Uh, I would like it not to happen to me, so let's make a move. Looks like a reasonable developing move. Jesus, did I make that noise? Yeah, that's what I mean, is that if he has two minutes left on all the games, and um, your game is on move two, you have a better advantage than uh, check if he's me. got two it's minutes left on all the games, and your game's on move 40. Um, because it's going to happen to me. Um, I probably said that wrong, but the point is that by delaying... Against a host who gives them a lot, gives themselves extra time at the start of the simul, rather than doing the whole increment thing, um, um, uh, you get some advantage. Right, um, shizzle. All right. Um... Yeah, my queen side pieces aren't moving. Um, there. I don't know if it was my queen side you were talking we about or somebody see. else's. We shall see. But, yeah, my queen side's not okay. moving, that and hanging. that means that all his pawns on the queen points? side are barricaded and will not. not promote. I guess not. Um, nobody cares that I noticed that. Um, I'm gonna move the bishop back, which seems to be embarrassing, but I have a plan. What's my plan? I don't have a plan. Come on. I definitely don't have a plan. Like, I just don't believe in Bishop Takes Knight. Alright. Defending the wayward steed of waywardness. Alright. Um. Yeah, 
okay. So oh, that's nobody's the king. moving their queen side. That's very much. Yeah, a I guess king, you're right. And it's it's very much looks like something that should get checked. Hey, look, we got a king of the hill game. Mm. Whoa! I'm just gonna. Oh, Zug. I mean, if it lives, it lives. Blue it. The world is an unjust place. There's king takes knight. That's like a win in one move. Ah, man, Zug. That was not at all necessary. Threatening something but I guess extreme, that does end is, the misery, um, if there was any misery well, there. Knight takes pawn winning the queen. So, what a disaster. It's kind of a thing, isn't it? Um, all right. All right. Um, maybe I just go here. I don't know. Probably I should have thought about that or something. All right. Still hanging on. <laughs> Some kind of octopus is very really confused by that this, move. But it doesn't work at all, which is unfortunate. Maybe I should have moved the bishop there. Yeah, I should have moved the bishop there. That wouldn't have been stupid. Can I go here? Uh, and we got a bit of Latin discussion yeah, going on in Zug's channel. Or is it? Um, ah! Somebody knows um, the accusative versus the ablative forms of um, adjectives. Uh, I don't know how you screwed this up so badly. Oh well. Um. Well, it either works or it doesn't. I've got a thing or two to learn from Kotov syndrome, don't I? All right. Maybe I need to return to just playing A5. YOLO! <laughs> Sorry. Um, that was heavily YOLO-fied. Um... Maybe now would be a good time to be doing this, um, because I got to do it someday, or it won't happen. So is or I could play a three b four going to happen here? Uh, if not why not? Uh, it looks quite strong. I guess Black has to play d five if a three b four gets played, because a three b four threatens b five, and then turn b seven starts to fall. Um, I could be wrong. Um, Alright, d4 was kind of loose there. I didn't see what he played. And here's the atomic game. Queen d4 is what forced. How did, what happened oh, to the but queen bishop? d4 also loses. There so was a yeah, that's lost. Oh, yep, bullshit. I saw that coming. Thug did not see that coming. How did Bishop get lost like that? Like, that's just stupid. Uh, oh, hey, atomic so much. I mean, like, come on. I mean, how am I supposed to calculate? <laughs> and I was going to play Bishop takes Buggy so clever. Like, I mean, come on. Like, it's just nonsense. I mean, so, like, I yeah. the bonds blow up things. Zug like, just uh, wastes his time complaining about how he doesn't know how to calculate stupid, atomic. Stupid At least he has the common sense to resign that. Yeah, I could probably beat Zug at Atomic, but um, I wouldn't be too proud of it. Alright, so let's go here, because... Um, because well, I'd probably win on some... Uh, some nasty trick Why somehow. Why are we in a rush to play moves like that? Alright. That were Atomic, you just play Knight takes D7, all right. um, and all ooh, the pieces would disappear. Uh, no. Oh! No, not even Whoa! Close. Yeah, I don't think taking h7 works there, but Uh, the Carrier's game. Uh, what's going on here? Um, um... I can go here. I will go there. So confusing. Oh, but knight d6 follows. Alright. 
Um, and Knight F3. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Early Knight F3 message. gets played there. Okay, F4, um, E5. I'm going to go here. On guard, I guess. Um, okay, this looks dangerous. Okay, so this is... Uh, Maybe Queen D2. Something. Queen D2 and King B1. Well, no. Bishop B3 is necessary guy. first. Um, Maybe I should be going here. <laughs> oh, you are playing with fire Zog. Please don't kill me. Maybe you're right, but I don't know if it matters. Right, is he going to take F6? He takes F6. Alright. So, um... What's all this then? So how do I get some open lines here? Oh, where's the checkmate? I think I take F5. Here? I know there's a checkmate. I can feel the checkmate. I can go here. Yeah. Ooh, look, be me Pick clever. Five. Is this clever? Like I said, I'm trying to vacate sure. the uh, file here. Clever. The idea is, is that I didn't play e5, and he doesn't have a way to defend. I think it's no. So way to this is no, 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 okay. Let me silence the commentary there. This is actually starting to get interesting. And there are meaningful things I can say about it because I can actually start to be able to calculate what's going on. So, he's doubly threatening f5. I'm threatening f5 and I'm threatening f6. Long term, I would like to open either, well, any of these files, really. But the queen side is thoroughly blockaded. I'm not sure how I'm going to open everything up. But I think I'm on the right path anyway. Now, uh, one thing he could threaten is maybe g5 instead of taking f5. There's no compulsion to take there. I guess, technically speaking, I have no compulsion to recapture. Oh, wait, I see a combination. So, let's say that we have this where he takes f5, I take f6, he plays g5. I could take f5. And sure, he gets my knight, but then I get the pawn here. This looks reasonable. I'm counting up these guys, because this is going to be what may either do me in or fail to do me in. But, yeah, once there's an open file, things get difficult for the Horde. Trying to avoid opening a file. So close to having an open file, too. If he managed to zig swang me and I have to move something in my queen side, that would be horrible. So let's just hope that doesn't happen. Also, the other thing to notice is that um, he's got 12 minutes left. So yeah, the whole sack everything and prey strategy might be the way to go here. Um, now, like I said, he's got maybe 20 people still playing. That means three seconds increment per board. I'm not sure if the three seconds per board is going to be enough to give him time to calculate everything that's going on here. Especially if his time runs low.
Okay, so as predicted, um, g5 is happening, but he's just not taking on f5 first. That's the respect in which this differs, is that I still have the f5 dog. Still, I could play uh, knight g8 and transpose, couldn't I? Or I could play Kappa F7. Um, Kappa F7 looks good. Proves my development. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I'm just going to take there. I'm going to take F6. I'm still going to take F6 at some point. Um, the Kappa F7 maximizes my peace mobility. Also possible is knight f7. But I want to develop as many pieces as I can. Maybe I can promote my kappa all the way back here somehow. That'd be awesome. I'm kind of afraid of e5. Now, him having... Um, so my one pawn is blocking, or my uh, dog is blocking four pawns. Um, the more pawns I can block on this file, the better. Let's play cap f7. And... Uh, suddenly, his E file is starting to look a little bit thin. A great move. Let's see um, what's going on in the other games. But it's a move. There are a lot of moves. Um, maybe the, no. He's going to run out of time oh, on my game. The There's no um, way that he's going to be able to keep up with everything. Okay, Knight of Seven was quite strong. So it looks like he's doing well, very well that game. Do I want to encourage a four? Queen not? G4 threatens the rook F8 oh or rook C8. No, maybe. Uh, but then Bishop D7 might occur. Jesus. What? How do I feel about F4? Or Castle might uh, happen. Or Castle well, drops the rook. I think the to come back actually. So, so. All right. Um. All right, he is picking up the pace. Right, this is going to be a thing, right? Still not keeping up with the pace of three seconds per board, but it's not keeping up well. with the increment. Oh, there's so many things. He's still right. losing time we overall. To move faster. Um, but he is starting to pick up the pace a bit because he realizes he's in time trouble. And the funny thing is, like, the people who delay the most get the most benefit. Because uh, it means that later on in their games, okay, uh, um, he's going to have the most moves still to make. So, what should, in theory, be happening is everybody delaying, waiting for other people to move and burn time off of Zog's clock. And that doesn't work. That's not what people are doing. Bishop, I think. Yeah. Um. um so. Okay. I'm, I mean, I'm kind of threatening this. There's really. He doesn't seem concerned about it, or there's nothing he can do about it. Why did I do this to myself? Ever. Okay, move, move. My knight doesn't have anything better to do, so let's do that. Um. So, here's the point, is that only one side of the board is open. Um. 
So basically, the only pawns that can promote are on the king side. Queen side's not going to promote. It's just not going to happen. This is. I guess the one thing I have to worry about is stalemate. I haven't really thought about that. Um, but yeah. These dogs have the queen side covered. Plus, having an open file just greatly weakens this position. Well, I wouldn't say... yeah, okay. So yeah, my rook, knight, and bishop are immobilized. Um, and that's the price for immobilizing 14 pawns here. Um, because these guys can't move. They're immobile. Uh, you, you could debate some of that, I guess. Like, maybe some of them can move and make threats, but overall, this is a pretty tight formation here. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm trading. Um, this is what's at play here. These three dogs and these three pieces uh, for 14 pawns. Really, I guess what this translates to is, uh, hang on. There we go. Really, these backmost pawns and these backmost pieces that are immobilized. See, he's threatening to take my knight. I don't know if he's serious about that threat. I don't know if I care. Because um, I'd really like the e-file to open. It's not entirely open. I could do queen e8. So queen e8, queen h5 might be in the cards. Queen e8 also pins the pawn to e1. I mean, what's he going to do? He's going to push his backmost e-pawn, but he shouldn't be doing that. Because the further these pawns advance, the greater the chance that we're going to have an open file. Yeah, my queen's not going anywhere. It's more active on e8. And it would be just a godsend if he were to take this. There's no way that's going to happen, but I can dream. But he's not going to do that. He's not... He might be distracted, but he's not an idiot. The problem, if somehow, say, the D file and the B file get vacated, and that's not probably not going to happen without other things happening. The problem is that there are stalemate possibilities because of all the pawns that are blocked. Oh, he's dropping a piece. Oh, that hurts. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel like he's a that's that's rough. Got to keep going. Roll with those punches.
Yeah, free pawn. There's no way that could be bad. Other than like knight e3 check and then bishop takes b3 and maybe you're losing your rook on c1, but I mean, presumably you calculated that better than I did. Yeah, those are decisions that are difficult to make. Um, like it's easier to make decisions once you have an advantage. But when both players have low time um, and the game's barely started, there are some big decisions and commitments to be made and not a whole lot of clarity as to what goes on. Yeah, I know. Free pawns. Free pawns are pretty awesome. Oh. Wow. Uh, queen D1? Queen F1? No, no, don't. Oh, what are you doing? Goodness. Bear has set in. Bishop D2? I don't know about that, because you need to cover E1. Really need to cover E1. So you can get the rook in with check. Ah, uh, indecision. Such great fun. How much material is he down? Just an exchange, right? Yeah, just bishop d2, rook e1, rook e7. Okay, never mind. My turn. He plays e3. So now he's actually threatening to take. So yeah, I want to take h4. Or maybe I take d6. Maybe this is where things, where my queen side starts to play a part. I take h4, this undoubles g pawns. Um, but yeah, the f file doesn't have very many double pawns. Um, but more importantly, if I take h4, um, then that's one fewer h pawn to deal with. So that's not enough. I need to start mobilizing. Bishop. Tricky. Plus, I'm unintentionally delaying. Yeah, I don't want to undouble the C pawns. Oh, here's a thought. Well, that doesn't work. Um, I need to develop my pieces somehow. Oh. I don't want to take the deep on, because these are all pretty well blockaded. Even at the expense of blocking my own pieces. That, that bridge has been crossed and burned already. Um... Okay. On the other hand, yeah, bishops generally tend to be useful. I don't know if that's going to be the case here. I could activate my kappa to g6. This activity is worth a lot. Uh, yeah, that's too dangerous, though. That doesn't quite work.
I have a choice between d6 and h4. h4 is not going anywhere. d6 um, potentially is a problem. Let's, let's, I could just leave this here too. My goal is to vacate the e file, but even though it seems kind of unrealistic at the moment. See, what I'm worried about is I take d6, he takes, I take with the bishop, he plays c5, and then if I take f4, I might do g takes f4. Even though I, yeah, stacked two pieces to get how many pawns? Four pawns. That might not be a good deal. Yeah, I think taking h4 um, just starts to open king side lines and probably more worth it at this time. Also, knight h6 is possible, but I'm too skeptical of it. I don't know. Knight h6, if he takes h6, uh, I have possibilities. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what's it going to take to blockade these pawns, I wonder? So it's like between knight h6, knight h4... I do knight h6, he just does e5. So many lines. Yeah, if I start taking d6, bad things happen. Um. Yeah, let's activate the rook. I'm not sure that that's best, but it seems to be okay. Oh, in some games he's got like four minutes. So for him to get back to my game, where he's got uh, seven minutes, um, it's going to take a while. Oh, poor Zug. Zug got duped. Okay, so he is doing faster than he used to be doing. But it might not be fast enough. Oh, that's that's difficult to deal with. 
I guess you could get back the exchange by taking the queen and then doing bishop d6. Alright, so he's looking for mate. I don't see it. He doesn't see it. I don't it. see the mate. I don't see it. Why can I not see it? It should not be there. that hard to see. I mean, if there is no mate, yeah. that would explain why you're not seeing a mate. Oh, that's an interesting tactic. I did not see that. Wow. So many tactics just worked in his favor there. It means that I haven't been giving him enough of a challenge to distract him from his task of winning other games. I just need to move fast. That might hurt. Damn it. He saw it. Uh, <laughs> what is going on in this position? I don't even know. I can't figure anything out anyway. Uh, okay, so he took. I'm going to take back. And back to our program. I'm guessing he's going to get back to my game faster in general. Ten um, games ago. Because uh, I'm keeping up with the pace at which he plays now. Alright. Um. Yeah, now's the make it or break it moment where. Um. We decide which games he loses on time, which games he just happens to blunder something, and which ones he happens to survive in, I guess. Oh, queen, under attack. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it's difficult playing a simul. You're not going to spot all the tactics. Um... I mean, you might, but that's unlikely. Yeah, wacky. Um, this knight is unfortunate. And then the idealist sets in. He wonders, like, what could I do with that knight on f7? As opposed to saying, how can I win this? No, what? what's the best move? And that's idealism. Um, which, I mean, to get to a certain level in chess, you have to play pretty strongly, consistently, but... Right? Uh, I don't want him gaining any more tempi on the rook. I can avoid it. Do I go h3? Or do I go back to the back rank? Both are reasonable in their own way. I like H3. Um, Somehow I just do. Just keep it Learn how to hide your F5 is coming. Uh, but my rook has to stay on the tile. I always drop back to H8 if it needs to, but I'm worried that he might... Well, what am I worried about? My rook has maximum mobility back on h8. I'm not worried that, like, an h-pawn is going to get my rook. I'm more worried that an f-pawn might hit my rook at some inopportune moment. Or a g-pawn. Um, Yeah, this actually limits his mobility. Jesus. Oh my god, this is so awful. So, what's coming next is f5. Ah, oh, shit. 
Um, against that, maybe I'm planning just bishop h6 and bishop takes g5. Although, yeah, what's going to happen is that it's not going to let me get away with that. Knight! Oh, h5 would have been an interesting square for the rook. Um, time to think. Maybe I will drop back to h5. I really don't want to sack the rook, but I have to start thinking about it. Yeah, I know. He's in time trouble here. So awkward. How's he doing anyway? Oh, this is where he's spending his time. My G2's loose. Oh, <laughs> looks like he's in trouble there. Okay. Yeah, so as predicted, F5. Um, I need a plan. I mean, in a, some ways, this bishop is more of a hindrance than a help. Um, that doesn't justify sacking it for nothing. So maybe. Oh, hang on. What the hell is going on here? Okay. There's another idea. So. Jack. Oh, if I could get my rook uh, back there, that'd be awesome. But the rook's not the piece going there, is it? Really? Uh, this battery. Two minutes. Uh. This is the key idea. I can't I can't figure it out there's too much there's too much so yeah I'm just gonna play this and that and then we'll see what's supposed to happen in these positions um, But this is my earlier point about my rook on h3 stops both of these pawns, so he can't play h4 to defend g5. Now, the other thing is maybe, maybe he doesn't take. And maybe I do end up dropping the bishop back to f8. Which I'm totally cool with doing if he chooses not to take my bishop. Maybe I could pull a Nigel short there. Can I pull a Nigel? Maybe I could pull a uh, Nigel. Yeah, these pawns, pawns are too far alienated from the base back here. Actually, not this one, but just the other two. And yeah, this thing about attacking pawns at the base uh, actually makes a lot of sense in horde chess, after all. All right, he's here. He's gonna move. All right, he takes there. I could take f6, but I need to open the h file. We're gonna stick with the original plan, I think, of queen h8, queen h6. I wager there's no freaking way that he anticipated this. That I'm actually going to sack the rook. Because it allows me to hack off all the bases of all the pawn chains. 
And suddenly there's no way to promote a pawn on the queen side because none of these pawns have moved yet. Because he was so busy trying to stop my own pieces from becoming mobile, he didn't really care um, that this pawn structure just locks up all the pawns. Now the one possible saving grace would be if he could open, like if he could remove my D-dog and then maybe my C-dog and like get some sort of pawn chain with multiple past pawns, that would be one thing. That might be his one only shot out of this. Um, it will also be very interesting after the game, if I can somehow get to my Horde chess engine up and running, we can analyze the game using that. Um, but at the moment I'm just struggling using the Lee Chess interface with any engine. Something is just very not correct on my system. Yeah, um, gather my kappa and my queen, um, just cover all the, like, oh yeah, and all my dogs, just cover all the light squares. Okay, bishop takes and pawn and... So, I'm not sure how much longer this game will continue, given the immense, immense time pressure um, Zug finds himself in. Maybe taking f6 was important after all. I doubt it. There are so many f-pawns. I found it super important to take, um, oh, hang on, there's another entrance. See this? So, here's the other entrance. And since there's no e-pawn, yeah, okay, so he sees that. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that it is definitely an entrance, because I own all the light squares. Light squares are mine. Also, this is threatened. He's going to play... Oops, sorry. He's going to play E4. And I've got fun stuff. But, yeah. My dogs have a light square complex. Here's what we're talking about, and this is kind of what I was trying from the start of the game. Yeah, you can't beat the Kappa now, can you? And it does not help Zug at all, that he's probably still playing about 20 games, maybe 15. And he's gaining 60 seconds per move. Which is not at all enough to keep up with the pace at which he plays, which is like... I don't know... 5 seconds per move? Um, per board? So, yeah, his time is just going to continue dwindling as he has real problems to address on the board. As I predicted, now I could take, I don't have to take this pawn. In fact, this pawn's not worth very much. Um, really, it's um, this sort of thing. Oh wait, this gets me forked. I cannot do that. I mean, maybe I can, and that's completely insane that, like, I could give up a rook and it's not going to change anything. That might even be the best thing to do here. Um, wow. So, yeah. Uh, 
because if he pushes, then I switch course. I no longer take the H pawn, I take the F pawn. He takes my rook and I start munching every of these pawns. We get an open G file, and that's what really counts. Um, yeah, maybe I do just walk into the fork. That's, I've never seen... Weird. Um, but yeah, at this point, um, my target is really these pawns. These are the ones that could make a difference. So if I could stop them, that would be fantastic. Actually, allowing myself to get forked, he still has the one pawn remaining, and that would actually be a huge problem. So if I take, or if I do this, he pushes g2, I take f2, um, then rather than taking my rook, well he can't both take my rook and push the pawn is the point. But I do have to think about this. The possibility that might entirely ignore my rook. Um, but then I think I just change path and I take this. So yeah, I think walking into the fork um, isn't dangerous at all. Now granted, it might not even be the best move here. Um, Taking h2 looks pretty strong as well. Yeah, and now I look up at the chat and I see Trader Lynch saying that rook takes h2 looks really tempting. Yeah, and I know I briefly touched on the idea of just take h2, uh, take h2, take h2, but as I start to calculate it, golly, what I was afraid of was that he just push this, but, um, then I have queen takes f4. I guess he could push again. Um, oh wait, but then I take the g pawn. But this involves some calculation. Like, um, what could possibly defend this? Well, yeah, this, this gets ugly. I don't want to get into that. Um, would be far better if I could eliminate some pawns without getting exposed to big threats there. Big threat is when he has connected past pawns. And really this G pawn and F pawn are kind of connected and past. They just can't move at the moment. So going back Queen f3, g2, queen f2, and if he dares to take my rook, well, yeah, this is confusing. Yeah, I'm confusing myself with all these transpositions. I think just taking h2 gets more or less the same position, just with my queen on a slightly different square. I could just take d1. Uh, because he can't push any of his pawns at the moment. Yeah, I don't need to subject myself to any of this. Oh, here's the idea. Okay. Queen takes, rook h8, and then queen f3. And this way I can wrap up all the pawns and still have a rook back here for defense if I need it. Okay, so here's the deal. See, this is responsible for guarding that. So which pawns can't move at the moment? 
This can't move, this can't move. Um, obviously none of these can move. This can't move. None of the pawns behind it can move. This guy's blocked. Actually, I should just identify the foremost pawns that are blocked. So, none of those can move. Dude, I've got these squares covered. So he's kind of in a bind here. Actually, what I can do is drop the rook back and then over to g8. Well, then he plays h3, covering g4. Okay, so I have to just accept that at some point g4 is going to happen, because I can't stop it. Um, and I just have to have faith that it's not going to destroy me. I think I can believe that. Okay, he's trying to get a passed pawn, but he's way, way, way too late. Oh, my rook would best stop this pawn if it were able to go to g8 and g6 at a moment's notice. I think I'm going to go through with that plan. All right, so we're gonna enjoy this for a minute. I can't, I can't, I can't figure it out. There's you, you win. I can't figure this out. I cannot decide. Wow, some kind of octopus has got him thinking. Oh my goodness, he hasn't developed there. Um, um trade rooks and okay, yeah, taking h6 looks good. Never mind. Um, what's the pawn endgame? The pawn endgame is good, right? Okay, so just trade... Well, I don't know if trading queens is any good there. That's interesting. Back to the game. He's desperately trying to break with e6, um, but as soon as, like as I said, um, his pawns have responsibilities, so they can't move. That's the whole point. I'm just going to mop up these pawns from behind. There's only so many files he can open at once. And he's been really hesitant to touch my dogs on the queen side. Maybe that'll change, but... Presently... He's just been afraid of um, letting the dogs out, so to speak. Yeah, so here it is, g4. There was no stopping this g4. Oh, he's going to try to play g6 and e6. Or g5. Uh, g5 covers f6, so that allows him to push e6. Um... Oh, what do I do about e6? I mean, maybe g6 and e6 isn't something to be afraid of, but I don't know.
Okay. This is entirely riding on the idea that G6 is something to worry about. Um, I could play Rook G, Rook G8. Or even Rook H6. But yeah, Rook H6 is interesting. Or just Rook takes H2. Um, so many possibilities here. If I do rook g8, he's got h4. I don't know that I worry. One thing I have to be really careful about... Uh, not accidentally giving him a passed pawn that can promote before I have time to like, save the day. Um... No, seriously, I'm deciding here, um, what are all the formations he can bring against me, and can I stop every one of them? I think I need to cover g6, or at least e6. And the only way to do so is rook g8. Rook g8, g6, um, we take twice here, and f5. I think I still have everything covered, barely. That's frightening. I think I just need to keep taking pawns, because there's no better way to cover all this. What about Rook F8? Rook of 8 G6. I just don't know what's going on here. Maybe after F5 instead of King G5, I just do, or yeah, just do Cap F7. That might hold. So we got rook g8, we got rook h6, I'm not sure what else. Hmm. And there's rook e8. Rook e8 traps my rook. No oh good. Okay, we're going to play rook g8. 
I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. 16 games remain? Are you kidding me? Holy moly. And I wager that he doesn't have three minutes on every board. Let's take a look at how things are progressing. Oh, he does. Three minutes on this board. Three minutes on that board. So he's been keeping up. Might change once you get once he gets to my board. Ooh, anti chess end games. Take a rook. You might think I'm joking, but no. Okay, so things are getting serious in this game. Oh, wow. Uh, pawn tensions. That's going to be fun for him. Well, we'll see, we'll see. That's looking interesting, but I wouldn't place my bets just yet. So yeah, he's going to capture my rook. Uh, after which... I don't know. I either do... Yeah, I probably do Appa takes. Got a well-placed Kappa here. So the second half of this game is going to consist of him trying to get stalemated. Because I don't see a pawn breakthrough. I mean, maybe there is one, but I'm not seeing it. You've successfully vacated the G file and most of the E file. These are my two big targets that remain. They're going to be difficult to obtain. Maybe I need to go after the F file next. But we'll notice um, that his reticence to open the queen side has led us into this end game where suddenly there's no passed pawns on the queen side. And I've gotten trounced by players over 2200 or over 2000 in Horde Chess, possibly much higher rated. So just, um, I keep playing and I have no way to get a passed pawn. And I've played from the other side and suddenly all the files are open. I'm like, oh my goodness. So, I've learned that Okay, so this is a target. I really want that pawn. This one uh, maybe who knows, not so much, but this one I would be very happy to capture. This is the big threat. And I expect that he's going to play this, so um that kind of gives me a tempo to remove h2. Just going after the easier to hit target. But yeah, in this variant, apparently the concept of connected past pawns, emphasis on the word connected, is kind of important.
Wait, should I have taken that? I'm confused. I don't think it would have benefited me. Oh. Oh, taking e6 is a clear win. I've gotten myself into who knows what here. Um, because he can play e5. And my queen can't make it to the promotion square in time. My king has to um, accept responsibility for these men. I think I still have things under control, but this is kind of ugly. Yeah, now e7, I just play king f7. There's nothing going on there. Actually, e7, I just take e4. So his only move is e5. This is the only move in the position. I mean, maybe d3, but I don't think d3 helps him at all. e5 is the critical move. Like I was saying, I just take this, and e8's covered. Then my kappa can go mop up his pawns here. Or, um, my kappa can make his way back to defend the promotion square, and then my queen mops up. It's probably the better way to do it. But, we'll start with this. Yeah, this is, like, why I wanted to try playing... Um, this variant in the simul is because I wanted to try this idea. Uh, I didn't really have any ideas for other variants today, but I wanted to see, like, what in the world's going on. Does it make any sense um, to form a light square or a dark square complex? And to open one half of the board and leave the other half closed? I think this is one of the more critical tests of the variant. Um, yeah. Now what we do is just kappa f7, and queen takes, queen takes, queen takes, queen takes, queen takes everything. Um, meanwhile, he's going to attempt to get stalemated somehow. I mean... One thing for me to watch out for, um, so I'm trying to keep as many doubled pawns as possible. Uh, there might be a way to undouble pawns. Alright, so queen e2, h4, king f7, stops h5. Or queen e1? No, I don't know. h5 isn't the big threat here. I should still do something about it. Yeah, queen e1 maximizes my queen's mobility without hanging stuff. On the other hand, queen e2 and cap f7 will force him to move this pawn. Here we are. So, let's see how the simul's progressing. And Ziltoid, who's got a pretty evenish position. Oh shit, uh, shit, 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 shit. I think I just killed myself. Um that was dumb. He's not I complaining about this that. game, he's um, complaining about the move in the previous game. Didn't have time to analyze that. Um oh, so many possibilities. Wow. Um taking G six and then rip oh well, no, that doesn't work. Yeah, what he does is probably best. Ooh, ooh, that hurts. Well, he might have something here too. If he plays 
No, he doesn't. Never mind. All right, it's my move. Doing cap F7. Um, there's no promotion on E8 today. Back to the simul. Wow, so many Rook end games. Uh, looks like he's getting his rear end handed what? to him there, too. How did that move happen? That move isn't supposed to ha What? Did I just... Oh. Well, B6, no. he might still be okay. Oh. No! What's he complaining oh. about? I'm going to have to mute that. Sorry for all you enthusiasts. You might have to go to his stream to enjoy the rest of that spectacle. Um, I need to do something about the H-pawn. Uh, do I do Queen H1 or Queen H4 or something else? I don't know. Let's bank on Queen H1 somehow. Yeah, his antics are amusing, but... Okay, I can't help. I'm gonna watch... Oh man. Looks like he's getting reamed by Kotov syndrome. He's gonna promote there, so he's good. Uh, Rook a7. Looks like he might draw that. Uh, he's in trouble there. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! I would not want to have that position in a simul. Okay. All right, so we've taken off the H pawn, which was the biggest threat in the position. Okay, a rook trade offer. That looks suspect. Yeah, you could trade rooks. Trade rooks, king g2. It looks scary, but if you calculate it out, um, well, no, that draws. Never mind. Uh, oh, you didn't play... Wait, what are you... No. There's an interesting stalemate trap if you count that right, but it's only a trap. Um, but yeah, he didn't play b6. He had to play b6, king b5, king takes a5, and try to promote all three pawns. The way he played it, I think... Well, no, he's not costing himself any attempt by. Never mind. Um, so I can play Kappa takes F6, right? How appropriate is it that Kappa takes f6 refutes f6? I mean, of all the ways to refute a move, do it with a Kappa. What's he talking about? This is about just queening. Let me this happen, but okay, we're turning on his stream volume All again. Right. Um, whoa! Oh, that's tactical. I didn't notice that move. Uh, when, how did very that tactical. What can I do about it? Uh, oh, no, that might work. Yeah, I was gonna say, queen takes, rook move. takes, rook, king f2, uh, knight d3, oh, it's my knight move. Takes, and now I'm, oh, my, everything's attacked. I think I'd just go back cap F7. 
Really, it's my queen that's going to want to do all the mopping up here. If he wants to play f6, I'll play kappa takes f6 again. Ooh, that, that's, uh, oh, that's yeah. game. So busted there. Okay, we got Kappa takes F6. Uh, yeah, he's not saving that, because he forgot to take the A pawn. Um, he might be able to generate counterplay against the E pawn in that position, but didn't find it. Um, but the knight and queen are probably going to storm his king and cause him some havoc. Okay, we're doing kappa f7 again because I really don't want to see this promotion happen. Um... So my my fantastic technique is uh yeah he's kind of a little um, well against good play he'd be busted um I'm not sure if he's gonna find a way to dig that out yeah. this is over so, this is super busto um so attack. So... that's interesting. Yeah, he's got a protected past pawn, which is important should rooks get traded. Okay, back to this. So I've got 18 minutes, 43 check me, check seconds. Me. Check me. Check me. Soon he's going to be able to savor this game and devote his entire efforts to enjoying this, whatever it is. He's been allergic to developing my pieces, but there's only so much he can do. And I've been carefully avoiding undoubling pawns. Back we go. This covers both d5 and c1. So if some kind of crazy tactic happens, I'm ready to snatch d5. But realistically, probably just going to play a2. Um, and we'll take it from however that goes. Now, I have a choice. I don't know my horde chess endgames, but a little birdie tells me that king e8 might be a thing here. Yeah, if I put my cap in front of the pawn, then b5 is forced. Um, I don't know. Or I'm sorry, he could take um, my franker z uh, c6. Hmm. I do want to target these pawns on the D file, but there might be other targets worth attacking as well. Yeah, I think I should just snatch C1. My king, or my kappa, um, can take on all these pawns. There's not going to be a promotion. Not if I'm paying attention.
Oh, here, yeah, Zug's lamenting his other games. Might take him, oh, he's back. Now I get to, okay, so now I have no attack on d5. By no, I mean my queen isn't attacking it. Um, so I need to open the a file. Is this will let my rook in. So I'm sorry to see my franker z or my a franker z go, but I've still got three franker z's left. I don't know if I care about this A pawn. Really, it's um, these guys that I want. The A pawn doesn't look so important. Uh, yeah, I'm. Tr this is messy. And there are eight players remaining in the simul. Um. Yeah, I want to take out the C pawns next. And I'm not sure that taking a5 helps me in that regard. Oh no. Yeah, these have the greatest chance of becoming past pawns, so maybe I should take it. What a mess. Four players remaining, huh? Who's gonna get to savor this game along with me. Um, hmm, I don't know what to capture. I want to... I need to strike at the root of the chain, not the head. Yeah, so we're taking B1. I'm very concerned about the possibility of him somehow getting it past B and A pawn. But um, I don't see any way that he can do that. But there's certainly some possibility. Like if anything does happen, it's going to be on those files. D files adequately blockaded. Oh, yeah, I need to take out the D and the B files. That's the point. So that's why I start with B1. I could take B2, C3, D4. Um, yeah. So, we're getting close here. It's always frightening. Oh, really, both, both sides. Um, but more so with the pieces, because once you make a mistake with the pieces, and the pawns just mow you over, there's no going back. If you make mistakes with the pawns, you maybe lose a pawn or two. Make a mistake with the piece.